motorway driving in this weather is not pleasant, so I'm always happy when a landmark catches my eye. Driving through Cumbria on the motorway, you catch sight of a huge aerial in the middle of the countryside. Well, I think it's time to leave the lorries and the spray and travel some B roads. So you had better do what you were told. You better listen to the radio. In fact, this is Skelton Transmitting Station. It's a large collection of aerials, including one that will soon be Britain's tallest structure. Their job is to send out shortwave radio signals which travel massive distances. Skelton was built in the 1940s to play a vital but top secret role in the Second World War. Its shortwave signal reached as far as the Pacific, but its main audience was nearer to home. Primarily this building broadcast into occupied Europe to speak to the enslaved people of Europe. So how important was Skelton's contribution during the war? As well as the ordinary broadcasts that the BBC did, there were coded messages included, and the typical news bulletin would include the phrase, perhaps, Aunt Polly's tea party would begin at moonrise. Now, the reason for those um, little secret, quirky, if you like, um, inclusions into the programme was such that uh, they sent a signal out to the French resistance who might, on receipt of these messages, be told that they had to go and blow a piece of railway line up but to demolish a building. So it was Skelton's part in the war effort, really. Skelton was built to make sure people heard what was really happening, at least from a British perspective. It was easily the largest shortwave broadcasting station in the world. But it was also transmitting to the home front where radio played a vital role during the war. Radio came straight into people's homes and could report news uh, much more swiftly than any other medium. So, of course, radio is absolutely crucial. People want two things in wartime. They want news, they want information, but they also want escape from it. So uh, it was absolutely vital that, that morale was, was maintained. And so we come to the end of another programme played to you by the BBC Dance Orchestra. Entertainment shows help bind the nation together. More importantly, Skelton's transmissions were central in keeping spirits high and making sure there was an appealing alternative to the Nazi propagandist known as Lord Haw Haw. Germany calling, Germany calling. You are about to hear our news in English. The talks that he gave were quite sinister and quite plausible and quite effective. And until the BBC could provide a substantial diet of programmes of its own, quite a, a large number of people listened. We are not surprised to learn that panic and confusion are hourly gaining ground in Britain. The only wonder is that the people of this doomed island took so long to realise the nature of the position into which their politicians had led them. Because radio was so important, Skelton was constructed deep in the countryside and built to resist all kinds of attack. The building is essentially a steel structure with 18-inch thick reinforced walls. There was mains electricity fed into one end of the building and locally produced electricity at the other end of the building. If one end was taken out by a bomb, the electricity would continue to be produced at the other end. Not only that, but there were two sites, mirror images of one another. If one site was taken out by a bomb, then the other site would uh, carry on broadcasting. Skelton had to broadcast no matter what. It was of the utmost importance that our message got into occupied Europe and beyond. So next time you're on the M6 in Cumbria, look out for the masts that helped keep wartime morale sky high.